This is three ways to clean up your pole game. Whether you are doing this just for your own personal enrichment, doing it for the gram, have a performance coming up, a competition coming up, just wanting to improve, period. Okay, number one, pretty sure you already knew this one was coming, toe point. That being said, do as I say, not as I do. I still have a foot recovering from a surgery that has a iffy toe point at the moment. So on this, biggest thing I find from polars is like, oh, I can't get my toe point. Do you work on it? Okay. A, really important for obtaining this and getting your toe point refined and clean is doing exercises off the pole. Okay. Upside is you can do it on a rest day because you take those, right? Work on your toe point, strengthening exercises, stretching exercises. You can find more info below on a tutorial I have that goes through those and some things you can work on. But once you've done your off the pole exercises and you can add them as part of your warm up for pole on your rest day, on your stretch day, while you're watching TV, while you're brushing your teeth, whatever. The next step is to work them on the pole. That being said, the time to work on your toe point is not when you're new, doing a new move that you're afraid you might die, right? Number one priority, don't die. Once we've ruled that out and we're pretty secure in that, then we can focus on making things pretty. So that means just your climb, okay? When you do your climb, start out in your pole session. This is partially why pole conditioning is so expensive. Is it expensive? Oh my gosh, yes, it is expensive on my psyche, my body, my everything. Um, so it's quite often something that people don't wanna do is that, they don't think it's that exciting, but that is the time to clean up your technique. So for example, on your pole conditioning is just doing climbs. Are your feet pointed or are they flexed? Can you do a second climb and have your feet stay pointed the entire time? Can you come down the pole and have your feet still be pointed? Okay. So pick a handful of moves three to five, they could be climbs, it could be inverts, it could be transitioning to your jasmine, transitioning to your masthead. Do not pick your most difficult moves. Pick the moves that you do most often and you're comfortable with and video yourself going in and out of them and work on pointing your toes throughout, okay? So number one, point those tootsies. Number two, also one that probably a lot of y'all knew was coming, those micro bends, okay? So one of my favorite things to say to my students, whether they are prepping for a competition, performance, zombie apocalypse, life, whatever, is I should not have a question in my mind as to whether you meant to bend your knee or straighten your knee. This, I don't know, okay? So also on this, you can also find in that link below some exercises to do to work on your Micro bends off the pole, just like the toe point. Step one is to work on it when you are not on the pole, okay? Once again, you can work on them on your rest day. Some exercises. Once you've addressed that and some of the things to do and some of the cues to think of, quad engagement, that sort of thing, is take it to the pole. Just like with our climbs and our other pole conditioning, do not go with your hardest moves. Pick a couple of moves that you do frequently that you're relatively comfortable with video yourself and watch yourself and see those spots where maybe that leg was a little limp and it waited until you got all the way into the move until it perked up and straightened all the way. Could you straighten it a little bit sooner? Did it get a little floppy on a transition? Um, common question I get from polars is how do I get straight legs on my invert? Like I can do it with both bent legs, but now I'm trying to go both legs straight and I can't. Why do both legs have to be straight? Good exercise to do is just focus on one being straight. It can be the inside or the outside, but doing that exercise as your pole conditioning, just focusing on all the way straight with one leg. Strength wise, it's a lot more to go from a double bent leg invert to a double straight leg. Focus on one because we have the mental and the physical strength going on. Okay. So pick a few moves that you do with Maybe you're not an inverter yet. Maybe it's going from you know, a masthead to a jasmine or a masthead to a cradle or things like that. And look at those spots where there's those in-between legs. The legs should be all the way bent or all the way straight. Find a move that you do that you're relatively comfortable with and break it down. Look at it in the video and be like, is there a few seconds in there where that leg was in limbo? Which then you can choose either A, 
keep it bent longer, or extend it sooner, okay? So number one was those toesies. Number two was those knees. Number three, this is the one that I find many pullers don't think about, but having judged many competitions all over the world and performances and performance performed in performances is how many times you switch your hands. Okay. So you can take the same combo, you know, for example, maybe a apprentice climb and you can see a beginner, advanced beginner an intermediate and an advanced polar do the exact same transition. Same moves, but it's gonna look cleaner when the advanced polar does it. Why is that? Quite often, how many times did they switch their hands, okay? When you go to transition from a move, maybe you're going from a masthead and you go, and there's all these little busy little movements, that's what starts to make it look choppy. So I have a feeling you already know what I'm gonna tell you. No, this one you can't really work on off the pole so much. You got to do it on the pole. But the time to work on this is not on your hardest moves. Pick a couple of transitions that are your bread and butter. Video yourself. Watch and see how many times did your hands switch. Could you have made it one less? Or instead of a hand off and back on, Could it become a slide? Even just a slide versus an off sometimes can make it look smoother. Okay, so take some videos of some of your go-to moves, transitions. See how many times your hands or your feet, because it can be the same thing. So when I went to the masthead, there was a little uh, 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 with my toesies too. Okay, how many little micro movements are there? And could you smooth those out into one movement or two movements, okay? Of course, use as many hand transitions to make you feel safe. And then once you are safe in it, then we work on lessening those moves, okay? So these three things taken into practice will make everything you do on the pole look smoother and cleaner. It doesn't matter what level of polar you are, okay? Work on these on your basic bread and butter moves, whatever basic is to you. If you're new to pulling and that means you're working on some climbs or maybe a a tuck spin, if you've been doing pole for 10, 12 years and you don't know why it still just doesn't look quite as good as some other people, these are probably some of the things that you need to work on. So take these to heart, take some of your videos to heart and be honest with yourself looking through and Pick a few moves that you're going to start working on this on. It starts with your bread and butter moves, and then it starts expanding out because it starts to become a habit. One thing I will tell you, this only works if you do it consistently. Doing it once is not going to magically flip a switch and suddenly everything is going to be gorgeous. It's going to take consistency. So consistency doesn't necessarily mean 10 hours a week. Consistency might just mean you take 15 minutes once a week, and you really hunker down and work on these exercises. So try these out. Let me know how it goes after you've put in the work and some time. I hope these help you in cleaning up and your pole moves and making you a better polar or whatever better means to you because it's a personal journey. If you're interested in more of my pole tutorials, choreography, building combos for competitions, life, zombie apocalypse, I highly recommend you check out my EV Fit online pullers program. You can find more deets below or go to www.elizabethbfit.com.